Here's a fun program I started to develop with my students in a 3D graphics class with uh, Python and processing. And then I rewrote it in Scala and added a bunch more features. You can see that there's a set of nested boxes and they are rotating. And the most nested boxes rotate fastest and are the brightest. See the green is brighter the deeper you go. Um, I'll show you what some of the keys do. Uh, I can pause. I can stop rotation on the y-axis. I can stop rotation on the x-axis. Now we're just rotating on the z-axis, so I can stop that. Here's what it looks like when it's not moving at all. And I'll start it rotating on the y-axis. And you look at the yellow things, that's the box number, and then the degrees of rotation, or the, sorry, the angle of rotation in radians. Why don't we look at the code? Well, just to make it more interesting to watch while we look at the code, I'll turn on the x-axis rotation too. Okay, let's see how this works. Um, this is Scala code, as you may know, and you can run processing code from Scala if you just find the jar when you install processing and include that in your project. And you extend papplet, and then you launch it with this code at the end here. And the rest, it's just like a regular uh, Scala class. So this is called nested rotating boxes. And um, I might come back to these as needed. In the settings method, we set the size of the window and turn on 3D mode and turn on smoothing for anti-aliasing. You see how smooth these lines are even when they're not uh, horizontal or vertical. Uh, then in the setup method, we create the font that's used for drawing the yellow text. And uh, most everything happens in the draw method. Background zero clears the screen to black. No fill. No, I think I'll take that out because that happens just for only the only the text is filled. These boxes are not filled. Translate X, Y, and Z shifts the origin from the top left to the center. So things, so the box are drawn at the center and they're rotated about the center. And there are these variables that we use to keep track of whether we're rotating on the, each of the three axes. And then there's, you can suspend or pause with the space key, so that's what this is. And here we look to see if we're moving. And if we are moving, we increment this frame counter. Then we have the code to draw each of the boxes. And uh, push matrix and pop matrix are required so that we can draw the boxes independently of each other. Otherwise, the rotations would accumulate. So the push and pop reset things so that each box is drawn um, relative to the to the center without any other transformations except the the one that brings the origin to the center. The box rotation per frame is, um, so you notice that the inner boxes are rotating faster. The rotation speed um, is a function of the box index. So the outer box is, the index is zero, and then it goes in one, two, and three kind of like one, two, and three. We can call the boxes one, two, and three, but they're indexed starting from zero here, so that's why it starts with zero. Uh, the box rotation per frame is the amount, uh, it's the angle of rotation per frame for the particular box. And then this theta here is the frame we're in times the box rotation per frame. 
Um, and then if it wraps around, that's this corrects that. Um, so that calculates the angle, and then we rotate by any of X, Y, and Z, depending on whether those are enabled. Now, to make the color differences, you see the green is darker out here on the outside than it is on the inside. We have this code. Um, 256 is the number of color gradations we have. They go from 0 to 255. And we have this variable min edge color amount, which is up at the top. I think I have it set to 50. So um, they're all shades of green, and it starts at 50. If I made it 0, it would be invisible because it would be black. Uh, so this divides the space of color gradients by the number of boxes. And then the, the color amount for stroking these cubes is that minimum edge color amount plus the appropriate color for the box that we're drawing. This sets that stroke color red, green, and blue. So there's, uh, it's just shades of green. And then no fill turns off filling for drawing the boxes. Otherwise, we would see the faces. Now, this code finds the length of the edge of the box that's being drawn. And each box has an edge length half the length of the enclosing box. So these boxes get, they get ha they, their, le their edge length halves each time. Um, and they're all in, they're, their edge lengths are in powers of two. Um, and earlier we calculated the, the power of two for the largest box. And here we're finding the exponent, the power of two, for the particular box that we're drawing by subtracting the box index from the largest power of two. And then here we calculate the edge length by taking two to the power of that exponent. And then we draw the box. Then if we have the option turned on to draw the box numbers, the, the yellow part, then we select the font and we, we're going to use this edge length divided by 2 a few times, so we save it in a variable, half edge. And then, if we're rotating, then we're also going to show the, degree, the, uh, the angle in radians. Let me just turn off the rotating. Oops, not there. Over here. Okay, so you see when it's not rotating, it just shows the box number. It doesn't show the angle. So now it shows the angles. Um, so what this does is formats the angle along with the colon, and then the, you see the RAD, the radians, Unicode symbol here. It does that. Um, but if we're not rotating, then it's just uh, a space. Then we set the fill color to be red plus green, which makes yellow. And then we draw the text. And then uh, we pop the matrix to prepare for drawing the next box. Here, we process keys. This is a key pressed method. And we get the key that was pressed, and we look for any of these five keys. If you press N, then we toggle this Boolean value, draw box number. So if it was true, it becomes false, and vice versa. And same thing for these X, Y, and Z keys, and for the space. Okay, let's just have a quick look at some of the variables in the front. Here's the window size, which I set to 1080 for um, 1080p high definition recording. And the smallest box edge length that this will render the, uh, is 32 pixels. 
and the rotation amount per frame is five one thousandths of a radian, and the the minimum edge color amount is fifty. So this is fifty units of green, and then based on the window size, we calculate the power of two of the largest box, and um, then we calculate the power of two of the smallest box. We calculate the number of boxes. This holds the font. These four keep track of whether you're paused and rotating. This keeps track of whether you're drawing box numbers. And these next three lines create the formatter so that you only see two decimal places in these numbers. And this is that frame variable. So there's the program. You'll see it on GitHub in the DCBRICCETTI repository, Scala Lessons. And it's called Nested Rotating Boxes. And it's in the PROC for processing package.